Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be real quick. The petition that I'm doing right now is a universal petition, works in both federal and state court. This petition deals with the thing known as individual sovereignty. You guys have heard it referred to as individuals being sovereign citizens. If you've ever been accused of being a sovereign citizen, then this is a motion for you. If you think somebody's going to accuse you of being a stupid sovereign citizen, then this is a motion for you. Not a sovereign citizen as they define, but a sovereign citizen as the law defines. Now, what is a sovereign citizen according to the law? I thought you'd never ask. Let's go on to the top because we started from the bottom. Let's see if we can make it to the top. We're going to continue that. Uh, give it a second while we go on up to the top. I want y'all to pay attention. I put something, because I, I specifically asked him to provide certain case citations. At the said, I need you to provide me case citations where the courts have described an individual as being sovereign of their own person. That's what the Fourth Amendment is about, people. That's why you have the right to bear arms. As long as you don't cause harm to another, you have that right. That's the whole experiment. Everybody is missing the reason why this stupid country was established in the first place. The people were being ruled, and they didn't want to be ruled by another anymore. Okay, that's why they staked their own property, put their little four little stakes there, and they ran their own property. They controlled their own property. Pay attention. Go back. You guys seen all the Westerns? That's what they were based on, showing you that. Remember, the court said that an individual is a sovereign over his own person, over his own property. He is the king of his own house. That's where the phrase comes from. Now, I asked it to provide me cases. Now, it does the Wick versus Wu. That's a case where an individual from China came to the United States and it talked about personal sovereignty and discusses equal protection of law. This case right here, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I know Myers versus Nebraska, but this case emphasized the protection of individual liberties. Now, we're not focused on these cases. You guys will do your research and confirm each of these cases. I said, no, I was specific. I asked for cases that specifically says blah, 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 blah. And it gives us Cohen versus Virginia. Now, I do know that that's one of the cases. Grisham is another case that speaks to this. Okay? Please understand. The law recognized personal sovereignty. It has nothing to do with being a sovereign citizen. Pay attention. Do yourselves a favor. This is how you rebut all of the presumptions that they're coming up with. So that's what this is for. Hold on. Now, you're going to see in a minute, individual sovereignty involves an individual exercising their rights over their own property, their effects, their papers, being secured by the Fourth Amendment. That's what the Fourth Amendment secured, is your right to self-governance. Go back and read it. I didn't make this up. Hold on now. He gives me eight cases that support that, but then he brought in the 14th Amendment. I'm like, what the? And I told him, I said, hold on. Common law sovereignty, that's my phrase. I created it. Common law sovereignty. It's supported by the Seventh Amendment, people. The rules of common law were the rules associated with common law sovereignty. Now, mind you, the Seventh Amendment talks about controversies, but remember, Controversy is you exercising a right that somebody has caused damage to you, to your right to govern your property. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Common law sovereignty, absolutely. I am happy to provide more details on the principle of self-governance and individual sovereignty as established in the United States Constitution and affirmed by the courts. The foundation of individual sovereignty and self-governance can be found in the core principles laid out in the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution. The Declaration of Independence says that the people are endowed with unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, affirming the inherent sovereignty of the individual. The Constitution's Ninth Amendment says that the enumeration of the Constitution does not disparage or deny you of your right to self-governance. I'm, I'm not making this up. It's already there. Pay attention. The power's not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited to it to the states, are reserved for the states respectively or to the people. You have the right to self-governance. No one has ever taken that away from you.
No law can take that away from you. The people can't vote to take away your right to self-governance. You see, what the people can't do is they can't vote to take away your unalienable or inalienable rights. Now, let's do this. I told him, I'd say, I need you to put together a petition. Okay, I said, I need you to put together a petition. And we're going to do a universal petition that applies whether in the state or federal. So we did a university. See, that's what that's for. Here's a universal petition. He said, this is court. Then we did a second petition. Pay attention for the regular superior court. See right there? Okay, pay attention. Uh-uh. We don't want that. Mm -mm, that's too much. So now we're going to pay attention. I want y'all to hold on now because I, I had to... I had to take care of some things. I said, you will not use the word submit. You will document that I am a civilian, not a citizen, that a citizen is a subject of a government. And there's nothing in the Constitution that permits the government to have the people as subjects, as the government are to serve the public and the public not serving government. A subject serves. You will put forth the contextual case citations supporting this conclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, to subject yourself to someone means you serve that person. So why would you become a subject to the court? I submit this to the court. I'm submitting myself to your jurisdiction. Why would you become a subject? Now, hold on. Individual sovereignty right to travel. See, you have the right to travel so long as you don't cause harm to another. Okay, now, hold on. He did something wrong. I'm going to get him to correct this because we need case citations supporting this. So, hold on. He gives us our facts. Then he talks about how Congress are supposed to write the legislator, that them code statutes, regulations, and we talk about presumption of law. Man, that presumption of law is bull. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then authority and jurisdiction of the courts they have no authority and jurisdiction over the individual a natural flesh and blood person the court has no jurisdiction over so we got to correct that so give me one second wake up where are my case citations supporting these two conclusions And I thought I told you specifically that you were to highlight that the court has no authority over a flesh and blood man or woman, comma, a natural sentient person in their natural sentient capacity, exclamation mark. You will highlight that and provide case citations supporting this fact that I am not a juristic person, comma, not a legal person, comma, not a persona fictio. Fictio. Fiction. Stop listening. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. I will provide this for you guys, those of you who know what you're doing, because I know you'll know what to do with it. If you get a court case, any case, doesn't matter if it's a traffic ticket, doesn't matter if it's child support, this is what you hand them. Now, mind you, you know they're going to try to ignore. We don't care about them ignoring you. We care about you bringing this up on appeal. You want to get this on the record. You want to admit it on the record as evidence. Hold on, got to do that too. Wake up. Wake up. I need this to be admitted on the record as evidence. Comma, so you will present it as evidence and label the entire presentment as exhibit presumption killer. Close quote. <laughs> 
stop listening. <clears throat> and wake up. I didn't say change the caption, you idiot. You're still going to label it as a challenge to the jurisdiction of the court by a natural, sentient, flesh and blood man or woman, comma, stop listening. I can I can live with that because as I said the court has no jurisdiction over flesh and blood that's why they have to deal with fictions that's why they have to deal with all caps names this puts an end to all of that stupidity all of that submitting to the court's jurisdiction all of that testifying and entering a plea and all of that you're gonna have to go over it because he will leave certain things out because his job pay attention is to stick with the norm okay now he only is giving you an outline. You'll have to fill in the blanks. Now, some of y'all are going to be adding all of that junk. Y'all know who y'all are. Y'all know, know which ones I'm talking about. The ones who add all that stupid stuff. Suffer the consequences of your stupid actions. I would stick to the context of this. If I didn't know what I was doing, I wouldn't be doing this. So hold on now. Ain't nobody done it before. And then I made a universal motion that applies to both state and federal court. All you got to do is put the caption of what court is going in. And I make it evidence of the court. Oh, by the way, it's going to include a giraffe. So let's do that. Forgot that. Sorry. It has to be an affidavit. Wake up. Wake up. This is an affidavit in the form of a motion. Comma. So it must include a giraffe. Comma. A certification statement and a verification statement before the giraffe. Stop listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to create the link. I got work to do. It's 5.55 in the morning. Been up since 3 um, because I did a YouTube. I'm not a YouTube, but TikTok video. I have two YouTube, uh, TikTok channels, and I put it up on the channel that had nothing up because I had to practice with it. I had never put up a video, and the other videos for the other channels, someone was putting up for me at my permission and request so now i was doing it myself and i'm gonna do one minute videos you one minute videos that's no, no, not possible anyway i'm gonna do the one minute videos on tiktok from time to time bringing up stuff like this again common law sovereignty they know what that statement means they can talk about sovereign citizen all they want you know what they can't do they can't get around this this is one of those tada moments this is one of those, I'm required to have registration. Under what authority? It's the law. Excuse me, what law? Remember, this rebuts the presumption of law thing. The codes and regulations and ordinances. I mean, literally, it's right there. Okay, affirming the need for actual proof to search and seize personal property. Okay. And authority... And jurisdiction of the court now he makes a, a bold statement right here let's do that right there come on I ain't got time for you playing with me there's no authority or jurisdiction for the court to compel an individual to its jurisdiction either the court has jurisdiction in the first instance or it loses jurisdiction throughout as a result of the forbidden fruit and poisonous tree doctrine in Rhodes versus Massachusetts, I told him to include this case. Supreme Court held that a court that does not have jurisdiction in the first instance remains in want of jurisdiction. Supreme Court created that 
phrase right there. And want of jurisdiction. Okay? Emphasizes the requirement for jurisdictional proof. Reinforces jurisdiction must be established without doubt. Well, all of their jurisdictional facts that they put on the record are presumptive. They are claiming they got jurisdiction because you've submitted to their jurisdiction. That's what they're claiming they got jurisdiction from. But here's the thing. If you plea or submit to the court's jurisdiction, the court must. Oh, no, he left some things out. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Give me one second. I like the individual sovereignty and the right to travel. Okay. Now, hold on. Wake up. Wake up. You did not include all of the points I told you to include. Comma, stop wasting my time. Comma, and I need more succinct case citations. And succinct. Stop listening. And at this point, I'll be satisfied. Okay. Now, you notice he's adding other case citations. Now, he's still got our uh, Cohen versus Virginia and the Yarborough case. So, I'm okay with that. But I told him I need more succinct case citations. Of course, he's going to put in Miranda versus Arizona from where the stupid Miranda warning. Remember, anything you say can and will be used against you? That junk? All right, so again, this is a universal petition. All right, I got to go, ladies and gentlemen. I got work to do. This is for y'all. You're going to get the link, so don't worry about it. All right?